With 14.9 million Americans still without jobs and 3 million home floor closures this year, Labor Day came draped in mourning, wrote our next guest in her weekly column for the Washington Post. Workers are in trouble, unions are in trouble, and so as the election season shapes up are some of the country's Democrats. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Labor Day, the president got a bit of his old oomph back, introducing both an energy plan and a $50 billion works project. But is it enough? And will it be a trade-off for giving in to Republicans on taxes? For her take, the nation's editor and publisher, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, next. It doesn't do anybody any good when so many hard-working Americans have been idled for months, even years at a time when there's so much of America that needs rebuilding. So that's why, Milwaukee, today I am announcing a new plan for rebuilding and modernizing America's roads and rails and runways for the long term. I want America to have the best infrastructure in the world. We used to have the best infrastructure in the world. We can have it again. We are going to make it happen. Oh, Katrina, did that announcement lift even a little those uh, drapes of mourning that you said were over Labor on Labor Day? Listen, I mean, what he, his voice, his passion, his empathy lifted the spirits. He spoke of labor as a valuable part of the fabric of America, and it is good to hear that. <laughs> uh, the $50 billion investment in infrastructure, it's a first step. Yeah. It's an understanding that we need to rebuild America. Is it enough? I think you've got to look at the context of the times. We're still framing these debates with this crazy mantra of deficit hysteria. And even people who worked in the Clinton administration, like Laura Tyson, who was with the Council of Economic Advisors, talks about the need for a $1 trillion investment in infrastructure over five years, working with states and cities and private partnerships. So it's a beginning. Yeah. It's a beginning. And I think any time a president speaks of labor, uh, you have the opening to push him on labor. And that is critical, it seems to me, for the great advances of this country have come when people together in solidarity work for a better America. For a taste of that criticism, let's um, hear from John McCain, who was one of the first out of the gate responding. <laughs> Do we have to? Well, just, just a touch, and then we'll get your response. John McCain speaking about the president's speech in Milwaukee. The Democrats are talking, and this is all reportedly at this point, uh, about framing it this way. Let's end the tax cuts for the wealthy and use that $35 billion instead to have targeted tax cuts for small business that does most of the hiring and for lower income employees. Would you support that? Well, let's get in the old class warfare again. Let's get the rich. Uh, 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 just extend the tax cuts. Then let's talk about the, uh, the payroll tax holiday which for small businesses, which is something we have uh, fought for for a long period of time, and pay for it out of the unused stimulus funds or cut to other spending. The American people want us to stop spending. You are making it up. There it is, right out of the gate. Class warfare, and we must stop spending. This is a man who has sold all of the principles, the few he had, so he can be carted out of the Senate in a pine or mahogany box. Class warfare. Class warfare in this country today is Steve Schwartzman talking about increasing taxes on p private equity traders so that they pay what their secretaries pay, comparing that to Hitler invading Poland, which he took back. Class warfare is where you have corporations sitting on $1.8 trillion. Class warfare is banks' profits reaching pre-recession levels. Bank warfare, class warfare, give me a break. President Obama, at best, has done something to preserve the capitalist system from the excesses of these reckless and greedy hucksters. Well, I wish you were responding to McCain. Uh -huh. What I'm worried about is we're going to hear that language intimidate the Obama administration, and they'll give way on taxes, having said, well, we've given you stimulus with this $50 billion public works program. I agree. This should not be a left-right issue, though. Re repealing the Bush-era tax cuts on the very richest is common sense politics and economy. It's about giving money to those who spend. The rich aren't spending. They're not even investing in their own country. So I think it's good that Peter Orzag, for example, has left Washington because today he writes in the New York Times in his debut, debut column about not repealing it. It's ridiculous. We need to bring back some of the revenue. We need to have this on the table in addition to defense 
budgets and all other things in order to rebuild and revive this country. But you're right, the spine of this White House is wobbly. Paul Krugman writes in the New York Times, and I wish he was on all those shows, that you know we're in a 1938 moment yeah. and the administration doesn't get it and we frankly the people don't get it either. That there seems to be no consciousness of the role, the needed role for government activism. He says the public have soured on even that. Is that right? You know it's hard to tell because there is so much BS in the media environment we live in and that right-wing populism has overtaken smart populism. And you have a situation where government is not viewed as the solution because we have been living with paralyzed government. Caution is bad politics, bad economy, bad policy at this moment. And that is why at least sending a message that we are going to rebuild with a $50 billion infrastructure plan and more would tell people that the stimulus did in fact work. All evidence, Laura, reality-based evidence shows that the stimulus averted a great crisis, but it was too small. Politically, the Republicans would obstruct anything that moved, and they did that. President Obama was probably wrong in heeding government GOP obstructionism and going too small because that stimulus plan, who knew? that the recession would be as deep. Well, how do you explain then what's going on in Wisconsin? I mean, right. the president was there in Milwaukee, got a very positive response. But this is a state that is number one in manufacturing in the nation right now. It's got two points, two percentage points lower unemployment than the nation as a whole. And yet you've got good Democrats, progressives on people's issues like Russ Feingold, literally kind of fighting for their lives. Yeah, well, part of the problem is Wisconsin, like Minnesota, which were once La Follette, progressive, populist states, Wisconsin's a purple state right. now. But you also have to, and you do this, Laura, we do, the pain in this country is very deep. Right. People need an explanation of where we've been and where we're, we've gone. And too often it's a little bit incoherent, then you've got the Tea Party noise. So I think that's part of what's going on. The economy is so bad, people are hurting. But they have a right, people do, to be angry. Right. But the anger is not channeled right, and it seems to me our job is to talk about energizing and mobilizing people and channeling that anger constructively. The Tea Party always says government is wrong, cut government. What about the big business? Those two pillars, big business, big government, always vie in the American imagination for what is worrying Americans. But it's the big business piece of it that needs to be focused on and dealt with constructively. It is very tough right now. But I do think you have the possibility heading into November where the Democrats are awake at the wheel. Well, let's hope. I mean, you've, we've got the statistics out there. And just to quote Paul Krugman yeah. again, looking back over what's happened over the last, yeah. you know, 20, 30, 40 years in the 70s, you had the top 1% earning about 9% of the nation's income. Now you've got that top 1% earning 23.5%, or at least receiving it. That's the kind of talk that's coming from Krugman. This is the kind of talk that's coming from David Pluff, talking about going into these elections. I think he's going smaller not bigger. Let's take a look. Now, this is a turbulent political environment. We have big majorities. So, of course, we're going to give some of that back. But I think we can maintain control in both chambers if we make this a choice between two people in districts and states. And we have to make sure Democratic turnout jumps up. Because right now, the Republicans are coming out at a very high level. We shouldn't expect that to abate. I'm hearing go local. You're saying get big, macro, explain. Listen, it, this election does have to be about a choice, not a referendum. But I think you need to go local and you need a national message. You need to show that you are on the side of working people, but you also need to point out the choice, which is about being on the side of working people and the message of going bigger if you can. But, you know, if you got the Republicans back in there, you're going to see rollbacks of yeah. the regulatory reform health care. One thing I think this president could do in a symbolic but important way is appoint Elizabeth Warren this week. You want to have that fight. She is someone who speaks in the most compelling way about being on the side of consumers and working people in this country, challenging the banks who are predators. Very quickly, for people that like hearing you on Grit TV, they should know you're also on the Ed Show, as am I on a regular basis. Ed Schultz on MSNBC has come out and uh, he's going to be speaking at the 10 to 10 One Nation demonstration October 2nd that's intended to, well, I guess help turn out a little bit, but send a message about jobs and poverty in this country to the administration, among others. Are you hopeful that that will have a turnout impact? You know, Laura, I, uh, I think anything we can do to bring attention to jobs, and let's hope that message is clear, but I do think people need to understand that channeling that anger in a constructive way while marching, 
while holding this administration to better standards is key. Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation magazine, which helps to bring you the Grit TV every Monday, The Nation on Grit TV. You can get more information at our website, grittv.org.